In this video, we're gonna build a worship keys patch for the song, Christ Be Magnified. I'm gonna walk you through this process step by step and you'll be able to follow right along. Now, as a worship leader, historically building patches for specific songs with all the sounds and layers so-so is something that would take me a lot of time week in and week out. But with the Sunday Keys iPad app, it's a lot easier to find just the right sounds, place them where you want on the keyboard, and be ready for rehearsal. So let's get started building this patch. In the set list here, I'm gonna hit the plus icon and choose create a new patch. We are making a patch for the song Christ Be Magnified by Cody Carnes. It's an awesome song. And we're gonna try and build a patch that does the original recording justice. So we're not shooting for exact replication, but we definitely wanna fill some of the same sonic space as the keys parts on the original recording. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna play this in the key of A. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my play in and here and transpose to A. So then everything that I do after this is gonna be synced in with those selected keys. I'm also gonna hit the settings cog and choose patch settings for this patch and select change tempo. And I'm just gonna type in my desired tempo, which is 72. Now, if I have multiple patches in my set list and I switch through them, tempo is automatically going to be set to 72 when I select this patch. So with that little bit of prep done, now we're at 72 in the key of A, and we're gonna start adding in our sounds. Now within a patch, it's really simple. In the app, just tap add sound, and let's go ahead and start off with kind of the core instrument we're gonna be working with. For me, I'm gonna choose a piano. I think I'd like to put an acoustic piano in here. We've got a couple options, so let's start off by trying the church grand. Okay, that sounds pretty cool, but it's maybe a little bit too roomy or spacey. So I think I want something a little bit tighter. So let's bring in the SK Grand, replace that sound and try this out. That feels better to me. Um, and it's a definitely a tighter sort of bright focused piano sound. Now the overall patch we're gonna be building is gonna have lots of ambience, but because I know that I'm gonna be introducing pads, uh, probably a little bit of sequencing and stuff here. I really want that piano sound to be pretty dry, sort of right front and center in the mix. And then I'm gonna let all the other elements sort of make space around that piano. So I think this SK Grand is a great choice. We're gonna keep that in sound module one. Now next up, let's just start figuring out how much space this patch is going to fill. So next up, we're gonna bring a pad into module two here. So I'm gonna choose pads, and we can just view the whole list of pads available. I know that I really like this silky velo strings. Let's give this a go. Bring this fader down so you can hear just the pad. Okay, and then as I bring my mod wheel up, this pad is gonna get a good bit brighter. So I really like where the mod wheel takes that sound. It's nice and bright. When I bring this piano in for the chorus. I think that those things blend really nicely together. But what I'm not quite as big a fan of is the pad at the mod wheel down position. It's maybe still just a little bit too bright for where I know I want to start this song, which is pretty subtle. So what I'm going to do is tap into settings for this sound choose the mod filter tab. I'm gonna bring down the minimum value. This means that the mod wheel is actually gonna be able to make that sound a little bit darker in the down position. So let's hear how that sounds. Maybe even a little bit more. There we go. So now all that top end has been rolled back by the mod wheel and I can start with just some warm low and low mid range frequencies from the pad. So now together I think these are sounding pretty great. So Okay, so nice full range piano sound and the pad is pretty dark to start things off. But we still want some of this bright ethereal 
character to that riff that starts the whole song off. So let's add a layer here into module three that's focused on that ambience, that sense of space, and is going to sort of accent that right hand riff. You could accomplish this with a great lead sound. You could layer a bright pad. What I'm going to do is go to digital pianos and choose the DX E Piano One. This is a classic E piano sound. Check out how this sounds. Okay, so the DX e Piano One is a classic synth preset from a vintage FM synthesizer. It's a very distinct sort of iconic sound, and it definitely, in this form, makes the, the patch sound a certain way, sort of a 90s vibe. But that's not quite what I'm going for. I just want that chime and sparkle. So I'm gonna do a couple things here to dial this in. I'm gonna bring the volume down a little bit, and I'm also gonna open the reverb effect, and I'm gonna select a larger reverb size. So we're gonna go to the Cathedral Reverb, I'm going to bring down the dry mix and bring up the wet mix. Let's hear what difference that made. So a lot less of that dry e-piano signal, some modulated cathedral style reverb, and we've sort of transformed this e-piano sound into a little bit more of a textured sort of layer, almost like a lead, and it's really only sitting in the right hand and adding that brightness. So what I'm actually going to do is not have that present at all in the lower end of the layer range. So I can do that by tapping the layer editor tab, I'm going to choose the low note for my DX e-piano, and I'm going to choose what note I want for the lowest. So I'm going here down to this F sharp. So I'm gonna set that, and now all these bass notes I play aren't gonna have that DX piano at all. It's really not gonna add anything with all that reverb. It would just muddy things up. So I'm limiting that to the right hand where it's really doing what I intend for it to do. Nice. Okay, so now the pad's filling space, the DX e piano is adding sparkle, and the piano is carrying the core of the song. So I'd probably start off the song right here, and then I'd move the mod wheel up to add some brightness and intensity as we go. But I want to fill a little bit more space, both in the low end and add some more melodic complexity, some more little polish and texture to the right hand. So we've got two more sound modules to fill. Let's start off by bringing in a sequence element. So I'm going to go here to Arps and Sequences, and I'm going to choose the Simple Worship Sequence. Now by default this is programmed in the key of C and it's kind of doing its own specific thing. So what I'm going to do is open up the sequencer, I'm going to choose Presets and just load the default. So now I can program a sequence to do whatever I want it to do. So let's play around with this and come up with a little bit of an idea. I'm thinking something that's just sort of just filling some space with a good bit of ambience. Yeah, that's definitely what I want to do. So uh, I'm going to play this riff, and I want the sequencer to actually output this for me. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and learn this. So I'm going to set my input notes, and then I'm going to play my sequence that I desire, and I'm going to repeat this for every note that I want to trigger it. So right there to D, and I, I think this is going to be a really simple sort of background component. And I'm going to add one more to my six chord. Okay, so now we can stop MIDI learning. I'm going to set the steps to match. Since I only have four steps in that little riff, I'm going to bring steps in the sequencer down to there as well. I'm going to set the velocity to about 80%. Now let's hear how that sounds. Okay, so I'm going to bring the subdivision up to 116. Okay, so on its own, it's definitely taking up a bunch of space, but this is a background sort of element that we really want to sort of just swirl around everything else. So let me bring in these other layers and let you hear how it sounds.
So I mentioned that I want this sequence to sort of swirl around the other sound. So one other thing I'm going to do real quick is just open up the flanger effect here and replace it with an instance of tremolo. And then I'm going to go to presets. One of my favorite presets here is just this slow auto pan. So I'm going to apply that. So what this is going to do, the tremolo effect is actually just going to move the sound left and right in the stereo image very slowly over time. So the sequence is just going to be sort of swaying back and forth. And this is just creating more space for the core instruments. It's never going to be sitting right in the center. It's always going to have this sense of motion. So here's what that sounds like. And you'll just hear the sequence moving back and forth. It's a subtle difference, but it really helps if you're playing in a stereo room to add some width to those sorts of background elements. Okay, the last thing we're going to do is take up a little bit more space in the low end. We're not replacing the bass player in the band, but we can enhance what they're doing and also sort of beef up the low end uh, as it blends in with our pad sounds. So I'm going to go to module five, bass, and load in the sub bass. Bring the volume down just a little bit so it's not overpowering. And here is our patch all together. We're going to start off kind of subtle. So now we have all five ingredients. All that's left to do is set up some snapshots to be able to quickly move between different mixes for these sounds as we go through the song. So to start off with, I know that I don't want this bass or this sequence to kick the song in, and I really want to start pretty simple. So I'm just going to dial these faders down. We're going to save this as snapshot one. Now we could name each of these so that we'd be able to identify them, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to go through snapshot by snapshot and show you how I would build these up. So for snapshot two, Maybe we're getting into this first chorus. Christ be magnified. It's probably the first time I want that sequence to poke out just a little bit in the mix. So something like this. So right about there. And then as the song continues to build, I'd maybe build one more snapshot that is sort of my all in big chorus or bridge snapshot. And let's go ahead and save that with the mod wheel up a bit as well. We'll put that in snapshot three. So that would be the final chorus of the song. So something like this. So in just a few minutes, I think we've done a great job of filling about the same amount of sonic space as you'll find on the original recording. We've got five layers that are intentionally chosen to do one specific thing each. We've set the layer range of one or two of these sounds so that they're only present where we need them to be on the keyboard. And we've got some snapshots in place so we can quickly navigate through the important moments of the song without having to scramble to grab a bunch of faders or buttons in just a couple of seconds. So once we've got this patch dialed in and feeling good, we can use it in this set list inside of the Sunday Keys app, but it's also important to export this patch so we can use it in any future set list we'd like as well. So we just select the settings area for the patch, choose export, and then we can save it to our user library. Then the next time we want to pull it into one, any of our set lists, it's ready to go. I've already got a folder inside of my user patches called song patches, so I'm going to go ahead and save this patch there as well. So now I've got this patch in this set list, but if I ever wanted to create a new one, I could just tap create new set list. I can name it whatever, maybe next week. Now I can go back to add a patch from the library, choose user library, song patches, and right here, ready to go, is the patch we just made, ready for our next set list. I hope that you guys enjoyed me breaking down the process of making a patch for a specific song from scratch, and I hope you can tell that it's pretty easy to do so inside of the Sunday Keys iPad app. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, check out the links in the description. We've done this format before, and we'll also have more info on how you can set up an iPad-based keys rig for your own church. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss our next video. Thanks for watching.